is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We are thankful and grateful to the Almighty for our being here. And we are here not because of our goodness, but because of his grace and his mercy. Let us begin with Pass Me Not, O oh Gentle Savior. Israel. And they shall come thither 
and they shall take away all the detestable things thereof, and all the abominations thereof from thence. And I will give thee one heart, and I will put a new spirit within you, and I will take the stony heart out of their flesh, and give them a heart of flesh, that they may walk in my statutes, and keep my ordinances, and do them. They shall be my people, and I will be their God. That's Ezekiel chapter 11, verses 17 through 21. May the Lord bless the reader, the tears, and the tears of the soul. Amen. Amen. I need the
Heavenly Father, blessed be your name. Yes. We pray for this nation, O oh God. Yes. We pray for our pastor and all the associate ministers, O oh God. We pray, O oh God, for the musician. Yes, Lord. We pray for all who come to thee, O oh Lord, yes. to give thanks and praise to your holy name. Thank you. For he said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things that you want to be seeking after him, you will get it. And in the second glass it said, Where is the kingdom of God? Are you talking about? He said the kingdom of God is within you. It's closer than the breath that you breathe. Because that is the breath of life. That gives us vessel life to do any business on the earth. And the teaching of our Lord said, uh, all these things that you see what going on in the world will come come to pass. Yeah. Don't be afraid and don't be in trouble. But when you see these things, you know the time is coming close for my return. Oh Lord God, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. I am the bread of life. Well, I am the way, the truth and the life. I am the spring of the living water. I am the resurrection and the life. Heavenly 
Father, the light of God surrounds us. The ocean of love of God enfolds in us. The holy power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. We pray, O Lord, for those who are to the sick, the homeless, the shut out, the shut in. We pray for those who have no one praying for them, O God. We pray for our neighbors, O Lord. Almighty Father, all this we ask and we pray, O Lord, in your holy name. In Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord, and say your holy name, we thank you. Amen. Amen.
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Everybody that's happy to be here, please give God a hand clap. I know I am. I was sitting I was I was sitting down the other day. It was scorched. I mean it was hot. You know that 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 heat is sucking life out of the And I thought I was sitting there and a song came to mind. Y'all know what it is. All right. It's gonna rain. It's gonna rain, you better get ready and bear it in mind. God told no, the rainbow sign, he said it won't be water, but fire next time. Oh, it's gonna rain, it's gonna rain, you better get
with that and, and I thought to myself, I can't complain. Yeah. You've been with me a long time. <laughs> As we look at what's going on, and we wonder sometimes uh, with all of the violence that's going on in our communities, if somehow the weather has something to do with it. Because we got all of this nice warm weather, is that the reason there's so much violence? When the weather is dull and dreary and we have to stay in the house, we don't have all of this. But it's only when we can go outside and be active that it seems that we're having all of this violence. Sometimes it makes us wonder, is God still with us. And yet, the song says, it's going to rain. Uh -huh. The New Testament tells us, the Lord said, the same way you see me going, uh -huh. I'm coming right. back. Amen. Uh, so, is he on his way back? I'm going to give you a scripture and then I'm going to do a verse or something and then we will move on a little farther. Psalms 51 starting at verse number 5. Psalms 51 starting at verse 5. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden parts thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Let's talk about a clean mind and a renewed spirit. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. God don't answer prayer. The way we want him to. You just have to give him time. You know the Lord always comes through. You don't know how we You don't. 
Know that he is the anointed and appointed king that God had appointed. And there he was at home. Just the broke man said, just kill <laughs> As he was chilling, he saw from his rooftop a beautiful sight. Young lady in the bathtub. David thought to himself, what a beautiful young lady. Looked at a servant, go fetch her. Bring her to me. She came and David had his way and later on he found out that she was with child and her husband hadn't been home for months. Yeah, yeah. To cover up his transgression. David decided, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to send him uh -huh. to the hottest bath. I'm going to let them take care of him for me. Well, I don't want to have to explain to this man how his wife got pregnant right. while he was on the battlefield. Come out, preacher. Come out. Well, David thought he had gotten away with something. But I want you to understand, God sees and knows everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This particular passage is a historical background. This poem is a marvelous perspective or a perceptive expression of penitence. Rebelliousness producing distortion and an inclination to dismiss what's wrong in our sight yeah. and try to make it right in the eyesight of God. Come on, Bruce, come on now. But then again, look what happened with David. David, after he thought he had gotten away with it, and he thought that nobody really knew what he had done. Here come the old preacher. Yeah, come on now. Nathaniel tells him a story. He said, David, there was a man. There was a man. There was a man. That had one sheep. One sheep. And another man that had a hundred. Yeah. And the man that had a hundred uh -huh. took the one sheep. Yeah. From the man that only had one. Come on, come on, come on, tell the story. Come on, Pastor. So what in the world was going on? David said, I'll tell you what you do. Point him out to me. Yeah. And I'll kill him with my own hand. Come on, preacher. What you said? Preacher looked at him and said, David, thou art the man. Can't you imagine what was going through his mind? I'm the one. Right. I've done no such thing. Okay. David. Okay. Remember Bathsheba? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah. That was the only one he. Oh. God even so much as told David, David, if you did not have enough, you had a hundred. Yeah. If that was not enough, yeah. all you had to do was ask. I'd have gave you some more. Yeah. Yeah. Now my way of thinking was holy. I got a hundred. And you telling me all I had to do was ask. Yeah, yeah. And you were going to add to that. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have never left the palace. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes, instead of trying to fix stuff for yourself, you ought to ask God. Come on, preacher. Come on. Okay. Fix 
said Jesus fix it. Uh -huh. yes, he will do it. He's simply waiting for you to ask. Yeah, yeah. You too proud to ask. Yeah. What did the temptation tell you? Ain't too proud to beg. Beg sometimes. It won't hurt you. I know that's real. <laughs> that. God will hear and answer your prayer. Yes, yeah, well, well. Yes, he will. The real problem with David was that his sinfulness was on the inside. Right. His personality. It, it started in his mind because of who he was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He was stained from the inside out. Yeah, yeah. In order for us to get right with God, we have to first work on the inside. Right. All right. The fact that we are sinners by birth. Yeah. Uh, and we should never forget that. We are sinners by birth. That's right. Necessary. We are sinners by birth, so it's necessary for us to do a self evaluation. Mm -hmm. That's the only way you're going to get on the right path with God. You have to examine your own self. Amen. To keep our relationship with God pure, we have to examine our own self. Right. For many of us, our minds are too heavily influenced by the world and our surroundings for us to do a self-examination. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, I know what you're saying. I don't like looking at myself. I tell folk all the time, I have a hard time reading Proverbs. But Proverbs always points out something that applies, I think, directly to me. <laughs> That, See, God, I know you know all things, but why you got to put my business in the street? Why don't you find somebody else to pick on? I know, I know, I know, I, I, I know I ain't supposed to think like that, but, 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 I ain't got no excuse. I even reached that point where my mama, instead of me trying to convince her that I didn't do something, all I started doing was trying to convince her that I had no reasonable explanation for what was done. Thus, the lecture that sometimes would last for hours. To the point where I would go get a switch and say, Whip me. Let's get this over with. <laughs> but the conversation, even with the switch, didn't I tell you not to do that? No more. Wait a minute. I got to take a break and I'm coming back. And I would be so glad when Aunt Nellie would in, intervene and say, Yeah, my dear, then whoop him enough. Leave him alone. He doesn't know like his lesson. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Some of those times, when I would think about what I had done, it would dawn on me, you either got to be a smarter crook, or you got to stop doing this stuff. <laughs> So I had to learn how to be smart. Right. Think about it for a moment. The world influences mm. our way of thinking. Yes, yes, yes. yes. yes it does. Even as children of God, we are influenced by the world. Look what Paul said in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 11 and 28. He said, but let a man examine himself. Examine yourself. That's a rough, that's a rough examination. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. See, you know all about you. Yeah. That's right. You know what makes you tick. Yeah. We should examine ourselves for any 
unconfessed sins or resentful attitudes and be properly prepared for the answer that you get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sin. Hallelujah. All of us have some unconfessed sin. sin. Say it again, brother. Say you it don't again. want to admit to God that you have sin. sin. Uh -huh. You can't admit to God you have sin without admitting to yourself Amen. that you have sin. Yeah, yeah. Well, Lord. I tell you what, I'm going to do this this time, and I'm begging and I'm asking you to forgive me, but I'm doing this this time. That's hard to do. Yeah, it is hard. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. He sees you. Oh, yes. You know that song when we talk about, you better watch out, you better not talk, how, because Santa Claus. It's coming to town. He sees you when you're sleeping. He sees you when you're awake. Yeah. He knows when you've been bad or good, so be good for goodness sake. God sees you all the time. Yes, he, does. he has set a watch over each and every one of us yeah. Yeah. so that you, he knows what you're going through every hour, every second, every minute of the day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Examine yourself. What's in your life you have not confessed? And I ain't talking about confessing to me. Confess it to God. Yeah, yeah. I don't need to know all that stuff. Yeah, you, you need to talk to God about it. And what that does when you have unconfessed sins, it makes you resentful. When you see somebody else that look like they doing better than you. Uh -huh. Notice what I said. Look uh -huh. like. Yeah. They just as sinful are as you are. Yeah. They just know how to cover stuff up uh -huh. better than you. Come on, you got it out there for everybody to see. Uh -huh. And they know how to the borrow a phrase from Old man George Brown, they know how to keep it under the kill. Yeah. A genuine penitent will not hide anything from God. Well, well, well. You just got to lay it all out there. You just got to say, Lord, this is what I did. Please forgive me. Please, Lord. Please. I, I ain't, ain't trying to hide nothing. I'm confessing. Yeah. Now, here's one thing you better watch out for. Uh, if you confess your faults to God, yeah. you will be at peace with yourself. Right. And when you are at peace with yourself, yes. you can get along with everybody else. That's yes, sir. It. Yes, sir. Amen. That's it. Not only are we transgressors, uh -huh. mm -hmm. uh, we, 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 we are Kind of minded for. Yeah, we are. And that puts an enmity between us and God. Because God's way ain't the way of the flesh. Right. The flesh what when it won't. Yeah. And the spirit is telling you what you need to have. Okay. And most of the time, the two are clashing with them um, with one another. I'm looking at prevailing tendencies. Uh -huh. I'm looking at how we have some of us are so temperamental. Mm -hmm. It's because you got some unconfessed stuff. Right. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. Right. Here in the back of your mind. Yeah, yeah. And you 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 think everybody yeah. knows what you have done. Right. That's why you're so self-conscious when you come in church on Sunday morning. Yeah. Oh, say it again. Say it again, sir. Why y'all looking at me? <laughs> they ain't looking at you. You're guilty. Amen. They don't know what you're guilty of, but they, because of the way you acted, they know you're guilty of something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. You just told on yourself and didn't even realize it. Yeah, When you look at what David said in verse 6, in verse 5, David 
when he was talking to the Lord, he put it this way. He said, Behold, I was shaping in iniquity. Yeah. And in sin did my mother conceive me. Uh -huh. Now that's a whole lot of sin. In my in her mind, yeah. she was sinning. Yeah, yeah. Then she com committed the overt act uh -huh. of sin. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. I was shaped and conceived uh -huh. in sin. Yeah. In sin. Uh -huh. That's a handsome dude right there. <laughs> well, for me, and it goes the other way. You know, we got that little song. I know y'all too young to know anything about that. But see, we 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 see certain women and that song start playing in here. Uh -huh. She's a bad man. Uh -huh. She's a brick. Came out 
de jeûne. Immediately. Duck. <laughs> Mama said, baby, you're grown now. Watch your mouth. I said, Phew. <laughs> Jesus said, watch what comes from a person. Not what go in, but what comes out of them. That tells you what's in their head. That's the way you got to train. Train up a child. While they are young. Yeah, yeah. And when they get old, they will not depart. Yeah, yeah, the thought is, the thought is, that, 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 that had it not been in my mind, well, I wouldn't have done it. Um, David confessed that you want truth in the inward parts. Yeah. The only way I'm going to get the truth in my head is I got to deal with the word. Amen. The word of God. Why is it so hard for Christians to want to study the word of God? You can't get better without studying the word of God. You need to study it on a daily basis. I've forgotten things that I read five years ago. And I have to go back and refresh. That's right. Some of y'all see this new beer commercial that they're running about the mountain speaking for bush beer. <laughs> Years ago they used to talk about refresh uh -huh. with bush beer. Uh -huh. Well, the word of God is the same way. You need to be refreshed. Yeah, Midweek, refresh. Yeah. Sunday morning early, yeah. refresh. Yeah. Sunday at 11 o'clock yeah. refresh yeah. Yeah. we can't do Sunday night no more because most of us can't see how to drive at night but you need to be refreshed yeah yeah that's all right that's all right Pastor. Yeah. true right. then David said well I won't take so much of your time David said purge me with his son yeah. and I shall be clean Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Well, There's a story told about an old mother in a country church. Uh -huh. The preacher was preaching one Sunday, and he was a rather dark fellow. Uh -huh. And he said, Lord, wash me till I'm whiter than snow. Yeah. The old lady looked at him and said, he's going to do a mighty wash me. Yeah. You need to be clean. Uh -huh. And only you can ask to be clean. Uh -huh. yeah. right. I can say you need clean and all I want to, but until you ask personally. Uh -huh. Well, well, well. This thing is personal. Uh -huh. yeah. They would be saying, Lord, wash me. Uh -huh. After he recognized what he had done, uh -huh. he went to the Lord and said, Wash me. Cleanse me and make me whiter than snow. Yeah, yeah. Take out the sinfulness and the evil thoughts and wash my mind with your word. Yeah. And I shall be whiter than snow. Come on, Christian. Wash my mind. Because yes, that's where it starts at in your mind. Yes, if you don't think it, you'll never do it. Uh -huh. oh, what you talking about? If I don't think to take my meds, well, all right. when I go look in the box, I can immediately say, Oh, I forgot to take my yeah. medicine. Well, well. I got an alarm set on my phone that tells me when it's time to take my medicine. All right, all right. The morning dose is easy to remember. Yeah. That afternoon dose, sometimes you get busy doing other things. Yeah, you do. Come on, preacher. And you forget that you're supposed to be taking your medicine. Uh -huh. You need a reminder. Yeah. Church is your reminder. That you need the word of God. Yes, well, yes, 
and you need to take your medicine on a regular basis. Yes, take out the sinful and evil thoughts uh -huh. and replace it with the word of God. Yeah. Yeah. And then you will be whiter than snow. Yeah. There he went on in verse number eight and said, make me to hear the joy well, and well. gladness yeah. uh -huh. that the bones which thou have broken yeah. may rejoice. Yeah. You see, a lot of times the trouble that we are in yeah. is because of what we have done. Yes, sir. And God, he going to punish you for your wrong doing. Yeah. Well, Lord, I'm going through a hard thing. Yeah. I'm going through the crucible of a crisis. Yeah. Maybe it's because you don't have the right spirit within you. Yeah. You have not asked him to restore your joy. Yeah. It yeah. ought to be a joyful thing yes. when you hear the word of the Lord. Uh, it ought to be a joyful thing uh, when uh, you know that God is the one that's making you better. Well, He's not punishing you for to be evil, but He's punishing you to make you better. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm better than I used to be uh, yeah. because I took my whooping. Yeah. And when I took my licking, I was just like a Timex watch. Uh -huh. yeah. I found out it did not break me, but I kept on taking it. Uh -huh. Now I already know yeah. that if he done it for me once, uh -huh. he can do it for me again. Yeah. I can take whatever life throws at me because yeah. I know that my Redeemer lives. Yeah. I don't know about you, but I know my Redeemer lives. Yeah. I know he lives because he lives in my heart. Yeah. Yeah. Too many of us don't want to admit that we have lost our joy. Uh -huh. The only way you're going to get it back is you got to go to God and ask for it. Yeah. Uh -huh. David then said, hide that face from my sin. Yeah. And blot out all of my iniquities. Because I've sinned against you. My mind is broken. My bones are in a bad situation. I've lost my joy. I'm ashamed of myself. And I want you to hide from my sin. Maybe it's because of what you have already done. That you don't feel the joy of your salvation. Right. You got to be glad that you were born again. Yes. You ought to be joyful that in spite of what I'm going through, I still got joy. Yes. After all that I've been through, yes. even my ups and my downs, yes. I still got joy. Even though I don't have what I really won't have. But I got Jesus and that's enough. I don't care if I don't have diamond rings. I don't care if I'm not riding in a Maserati. But I have transportation. I got a roof over my head. I got food on my table. I got shoes on my feet. I got clothes to wear. And in spite of what all I've been through, I can declare that God has been good to me. David here is saying, give me my right mind and restore the right spirit within me. Let me hear the right voice. Cleanse me, oh Lord. Clean my heart. Clean my mind up. And renew my spirit. I need to be able to communicate with him on a daily basis. I talk to him before I go to bed at night. The first thing in the morning, I have a little talk with the Lord. All day long. I'm talking with the Lord. I don't know about you, but I talk to him 
so much sometimes. I have to look up and say, Lord, I don't mean to be worse. But I just need to tell you about this right here. And it's before I can get it out of my mouth, I feel the relief from knowing that God is going to fix it for me. It's already done. Because he knows what you have need of. Even before you ask him. He knows. Created me a clean heart. And renewing me in the right spirit. The only way you're going to ever get close to God you got to have a right relationship with Jesus Christ. You do know who Jesus is, don't you? He's the one that died on Calvary to heal. He's the one that died for your sins and mine. He's the one that died so that you would have a right to the tree of life. He died out on Calvary to heal. He died. He died out there. Sun stopped shining. Moon dripped down in blood. He died. A real and rock. He died to save a wretch like me. He died. Went down in a foreign tomb. Stayed there three long days.